What's going on guys? It's me, your pal, Jack Finch, right here on Top 5 Scary Videos. Today, I'll be your host as we take a look at 10 terrifying 911 phone calls. Before we begin, if you'd be so kind to leave a thumbs up if you enjoy this video and let us know what you'd like to see on the channel in the comment box down below. So, let's get to it. Quick, what's the number for 911? How do I know? Let's go! Now, this video list covers some pretty heavy material, so if you're of a slight disposition, please jump on over to our other playlists and keep on keeping on. In modern times, the documented coverage of criminal activity has rapidly increased in frequency with an increase in available technology. Police body cams, closed circuit television, and in this case, recordings of 911 emergency calls. So, kicking off at number 10, we have a call from Ashland, Ohio. Are you injured? Is there any way you can get out of the building? I don't know without waking him and I'm scared. In 2016, a police dispatcher received a call that would send shivers down their spine. As they connected the other line, a woman's voice whispered, please hurry, as the emergency services were sent swiftly to her location. The woman, who remains unnamed, had been kidnapped by Sean M. Great, a 40-year-old man from Ohio. After freeing herself from cable ties, the woman called 911 while the kidnapper slept and told them, I'm afraid he might hear me and catch me. He's strong. Are they on the way? No, we have officers we're sending. Hurry, hurry. She said to hurry up and come back. She remained on the line for 20 minutes before the police bust into the abandoned house where she was being held. And, well, this is where the story gets even crazier. Police later uncovered the remains of two more women who had been kidnapped and tragically killed. And as the events unfolded, police uncovered that Sean M. Great had murdered a total of five women. He was sentenced to death in June of this year. Next up at number nine, we have a call from Georgia. The state, not the person. Oh, okay, hold on to your hats because this one is pretty insane. In 2015, Georgia police released audio footage of a 911 call made by mother of two, Yvonne Irvin. She told responders, Yes, the police and someone to my house, my children are trying to kill me. What's your address, ma'am? So it turned out that Yvonne's sons, Christopher and Cameron, who were 22 and 17 respectively, had drugged her and her husband with Xanax. They drugged us with Xanax. They've attacked us. They're trying to kill us. As they had become incapacitated by the drugs, the two men began attacking their parents. They tried to attack us. They beat me up. They beat him up. They're trying to kill us. Please, please. Yvonne's husband, Zachary, managed to distract their two sons just long enough for her to call 911. And she made the call while hidden in an upstairs closet. It turned out that Christopher and Cameron had stolen a handgun and a shotgun, and during the ordeal had repeatedly inflicted blunt force trauma and stabbed their own father. Their motives were unknown, but police suspected that there was much more to this story. Amazingly, Yvonne and Zachary survived, but with severe injuries. Their sons were charged with two counts of felony, aggravated assault, attempted murder, and arson. Coming in at number eight, we have a call from Scottsdale, Arizona. Here, an unnamed 12-year-old boy managed to call 911 as he was home alone while two men tried to break into his house. Again, this one is edge of your seat stuff, and the bravery demonstrated by the 911 operator, as well as the young dude, is nothing short of astonishing. As the story unfolded, he told 911 that the two men were trying to break down the kitchen door from the backyard. Down the door right now. They're trying to get in the house right now? Yes, I can hear them. They're like banging on the door, trying to get in. Okay, and is it on just your back or in your backyard? The boy, who had managed to hide in an upstairs closet, heard the whole event happen as he terrifyingly feared for his own life. Have they noticed any police officers out front or have they said anything? Okay. Okay. Does your closet door have a lock on it where you can lock yourself in if need be? No, no, okay. no, 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 no. In an insane turn of events, the two robbers actually open the closet door that the boy is hiding in. But in an even more impressive feat, the 911 operator keeps a level head to buy precious time as the police officers descend on the scene. Leave. Okay. Just 
Stay on the phone with me, the officer. See him. Do not hang up. You stay on the phone with me, okay? Thankfully, the police managed to secure the scene and the boy remained unharmed. But it's a chilling insight to a criminal event that played out in real time. Next up at number seven, we have a call from Orlando, Florida. In 2012, 20 year old recycling plant worker John Maynard spoke to emergency services as an incident played out that would change his life forever. Emergency. I'm at Smurfit Stone, Orlando, which is on 7th Avenue. I just had my leg amputated by a bailer. I need a 911 assistance immediately, please. The call, which lasted over a harrowing 11 minutes, involved John frantically fighting for his life after his leg had been ripped clean off by an industrial hay baler. As the horrifying call plays out, John tries to direct the emergency services to his location with just precious minutes available for his life to be saved. Ma'am, I'm going to die. Hold on, please call me. Are you I am educated by a pillar? The call saw John explaining to the emergency services several times what had happened and exactly where he was located, but they had critical difficulties trying to find him. In his delirious state, John prayed on the phone with the operator, sending his family and loved ones his tragic goodbyes. Can you please okay. tell her I said I love her? I'm not going to die on her, but I love her anyways. Can you please tell her that? Yeah, we're coming, sir. You're not, and every, everything's going to be all right. Okay. Everything's going to be okay, okay? Incredibly, both the police, fire and ambulance services arrived to save John's life. And now, he publicly keeps the call on his YouTube channel to raise awareness for amputees and to thank the emergency services responsible for saving his life. Good job, John. Coming in at number six, we have the tragic story of Ruth. Now, guys, this one is really really harrowing. Sometime in the early 90s, 911 received a phone call from an elderly lady named Ruth Price. What began as an ordinary day for Ruth soon got a whole lot darker after a strange man had inquired about renting her apartment. It freaked Ruth out enough for her to call 911 and that's where things get really, really rough. There's a problem, ma'am. Oh, there's some guy been uh, taking the place out. As the call unfolds, Ruth becomes more and more distressed and starts to shift her attention to something much more sinister. Where, where is he now, ma'am? I don't have no idea. <laughs> Ruth was brutally murdered while trying to give information to the 911 dispatchers and her call is used by 911 trainees to illustrate the importance of stating what is your location. According to extensive research carried out by some curious internet sleuths though, no evidence of Ruth's murder exists, which has led to some people doubting the credibility of the audio footage. Although, I mean, you've heard it yourself. It's terrifyingly convincing and some people believe that the phone call is just far too unsettling to be a fake. Whew. Well, I don't know about you guys, but we've actually made it to the halfway point and I need a little something to lift my spirits because this content is pretty rough. So here's some adorable pictures of cute little guys. Much better. Bringing it in at number five, we have a call from Los Angeles, Southern California. In 2010, a seven-year-old boy named Carlos, through quick thinking and bravery, managed to call 911 as three armed gunmen stormed his home. 911, teacher emergency. Um, there's some, some guys, they're gonna kill my mom and dad. Can you close? Carlos bravely hid in the bathroom as the assailants threatened his mother and father at gunpoint. He pleaded with the 911 dispatcher to send for help, and as the call unfolded, things took a turn for the worse. Bring oh God, I'm out of them. Listen to me, take a deep breath. I already have the police coming. But as Carlos continued to provide the level headed dispatcher with vital details, the gunmen broke into the bathroom that Carlos was hiding in. <laughs> As it played out, the gunmen grabbed the boy and demanded to know who he had called. Carlos told them that he'd called 911 and thankfully, the gunmen fled without injuring the family. Police said that if not for the brave and educated actions of Carlos, that this event may have ended a lot more tragically. The three gunmen have actually never been caught. And next up at number four, we have a call from Corpus Christi, Texas. On March 31st, 1995, American and Spanish singer Selena Quintanilla Perez was tragically shot and killed at the Days Inn Hotel in Corpus Christi, Texas, by the president of her then fan club, Yolanda Saldivar. 
Her last moments were captured in a call to 911. Bobby said she's been shot, she's laid on the floor and there's blood. The events transpired after Selena's father and manager had appointed Saldivar as fan club president years earlier, who then went on to embezzle over $60,000 from Selena's devoted fans. After the family had confronted her, Saldivar bought a gun and lured Selena to a hotel room at the Days Inn, where she horrifically shot the young singer in her back. It's another lady, that's all I know. We're trying to find out. I mean, okay, this lady's about 40 years old. After the emergency services arrived, doctors tried to revive Selena, but tragically, she was pronounced dead from blood loss and cardiac arrest. The Latino community was deeply affected by the death of such a talented and well loved young individual. Coming in at number three, we have a call from Naples, Florida. In 2012, police received a call from 14 year old Alex Crane. He was at home, sick from school for the day, but what transpired next would horrify the entire nation. After being on the phone with a 911 dispatcher for over 16 minutes, Crane admitted exactly what he had done. My parents were shot. Your what? Your parents were shot. Your parents were shot. Alex Crane shot dead both of his parents, Thomas and Kelly, but could offer no explanation for the merciless killings. He informed the 911 dispatcher that he was not on any medication and hadn't had any arguments with his parents before the events transpired. Okay, who shot your parents? You dead? Crane was sentenced to 20 years for two cases of manslaughter, with his lawyer claiming that Crane suffered from mental illness. However, he offered no elaboration and prosecutors could find no evidence of mental health problems. It remains a terrifying insight into the deranged mind of a young killer with seemingly zero motivations. Next up at number two. Whew, we're nearly there. We have a call from Wakesha, Wisconsin. Now, this case has had quite a lot of coverage from us, but the 911 call behind it offers a chilling insight into the horrific reality of the Slender Man stabbing. On May 31st, 2014, two 12 year olds, Anissa Ware and Morgan Geyser, lured their friend Peyton Lautner into a nearby wood and stabbed her 19 times in a twisted attempt to impress the fictional entity Slender Man. Peyton miraculously crawled to a nearby road where a passing by cyclist found her. Okay, sir, are you with her right now? Yes. Is she awake? She's awake. Is she um, breathing? Okay, stay, stay right with her, sir. Is she on the ground or is she standing up? No, she's laying on the grass. Amazingly, the person who found Peyton was instrumental in leading the emergency services to her location, all while the two assailants were still at large. Laying on the grass, stay right with her. Just let me know if she's is remaining conscious or not, okay? Okay. As details of the stabbing emerged, the two assailants had stabbed Peyton 19 times with two of her wounds including major arteries and one missing her heart by less than a millimeter. The attackers were apprehended shortly afterwards at a nearby interstate. Incredibly, Peyton Lautner left hospital after just six days of recovery and even more incredibly, she returned to school in fall of 2014. And finally, coming in at our number one spot, we have a call from Longmont, Colorado. In 2015, expecting mother Michelle Wilkins headed to a house in a rural area of Longman as she was responding to an ad posted to Craigslist for baby clothes. What happened next is truly, truly horrifying. What, tell, tell me what happened. She cut me and my apartment. She got me on my as the call came through to 911, a brave dispatcher managed to keep Michelle lucid and conscious as emergency services rushed to her location. After entering the home of Danelle Lane, a 34 year old woman who had posted the false ad, Michelle was attacked with two broken glasses and a knife. And in an act of unspeakable horror, the attacker carved the unborn child from Michelle's womb. She was seven months pregnant at the time. Danelle Lane left her for dead as Michelle battled for her life. Now, my heartfelt props go out to the 911 operator who did an incredible job in handling the horrific incident. Listen to this. Oh, no. You stay with me. Don't go to sleep. You stay with me. You're downstairs in the basement. 
As the case unfolded, Danelle Lane had faked her pregnancy before attacking Michelle, taking the unborn baby and leaving her for dead. The baby, later named Aurora, sadly did not survive outside the womb. At court, Michelle Wilkins herself told the attacker, It is clear that you need healing and it is my sincere belief that you get it. I believe you have lost your privilege to live in our society. Your inability to acknowledge the immense cruelty and evil you committed only proves you are not fit to walk freely amongst us ever again. Danelle Lane was sentenced to 100 years in prison. <sighs> that was a lot. Well, that's all we've got time for today, guys. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up and let us know your thoughts in the comment box down below. You've been watching Top 5 Scary Videos. As always, I've been your host, Jack Finch, and until next time, take it easy.